Hi, I'm John Persinos, Editorial Director of Investing Daily. Welcome to my video interview with my colleague, Robert Rapier. Robert is the Chief Investment Strategist of Utility Forecaster and Rapier's Income Accelerator. As such, he's an expert in income generating investment techniques, but he's a widely recognized expert in the energy industry as well. With oil and gas prices among the top stories nowadays, I decided that it was an optimum time to interview Robert. Robert, thanks for taking time out from your busy schedule to be with us here today. You bet, John, anytime. Thanks. Uh, Energy is the big story right now. We're seeing skyrocketing oil and gas prices. Gasoline prices are going through the roof, although uh, fossil fuel prices have pulled back a bit lately. We're hearing a lot of falsehoods, a lot of partisan spin, myths, lies about why energy prices are so high. Set us straight. What are the real reasons? Okay, so the roots go all the way back to the COVID uh, pandemic of early 2020. Whenever COVID caused people to uh, have to work from home and and caused a lot of shutdown, people stopped traveling, demand for oil plummeted and oil prices followed. Oil prices plummeted. That's when we saw negative oil prices. And just before COVID, we were producing about 13 million barrels a day. By May of 2020, we lost 3.3 million barrels a day of production. Now, that knocked some producers out of business. It caused some marginal oil wells to be shut in. And that that production can't come back on quickly. And so whenever COVID, uh, whenever the economy started to open back up, supply has lagged demand ever since. And so we have seen, we, we still aren't back to the levels we were just before COVID, but demand has returned to that level. So we're missing some, you know, one, one and a half million barrels of oil that we had just before COVID. And that has been the primary driver behind oil prices. Now, that had settled down up to the beginning of this year. We, second half of last year, we were bouncing between 70 and 80. And then Russia, Ukraine is what pushed it on up from there. Robert, what will it take to bring down crude oil prices? And when might that start to happen? So people were asking me last week, were oil prices going to go to 150 or 200 dollars a barrel? And I said, no, uh, not unless oil uh, Russia's oil gets knocked completely off the market. Uh, oil had a uh, had a visceral reaction last week. The markets to the U.S. not uh, uh, stopping the import of Russian crude, but those barrels will find a home. It's just in in a in a small in a short time period, there's some dislocation and the, the, those barrels have to find a new home, and then we have to backfill. And so I was telling people last week, we'll see this settle down, and we did. We've seen it tumble. It looked like it was going to go above 130 last week, and now we're back below 100. So as as uh, people realize these oil barrels will still be traded on the market, then things settle down. Now, what will it take to, to for us to uh, drop back from 100 back to the 70, 80? You know, we need drillers to keep drilling. We need, uh, you know, more more oil production in the U.S. And that is happening and it will continue to happen over the next year or so, especially with um, oil prices where they are. But it's a slow process. I mean, I, I would imagine it's going to take six to 12 months before we might see oil prices drop back down to the levels they were at the end of last year. Crude oil, of course, is the world's most valuable commodity. It, it tends to get most of the attention. Uh, the media, uh, financial media, tends to give uh, short shrift to natural gas prices. But let's talk about natural gas. Uh, natural gas prices are rising, uh, especially in Europe, and that's an acute problem. Uh, Europe gets about 40 percent of its natural gas from Russia. Now, let's discuss natural gas prices right now and the trends that you're seeing there. Yeah, so for Europe, this is a much bigger problem than the loss of Russian oil. They are far more dependent on Russian natural gas and it is far harder to replace that. The U.S. can put more imports or or natural gas exports into Europe, but there are some limitations there. And so that has helped really drive up prices, especially in Europe, but it's created more demand in the U.S. as well. And as far as supply goes, natural gas supplies were also negatively impacted when oil production fell. A lot of the natural gas we get is associated with oil production. So when oil production falls, we see natural gas supplies fall. So those factors, we got higher demand and lower supply on natural gas have have boosted those prices as well. As oil and gas prices soar, energy-linked investments have been thriving. 
but by the same token, uh, they're getting rather pricey. Do you still see pockets of value in the energy sector? Yeah, I have cautioned people lately to beware of these lofty heights and look for, you know, opportunities. Um, you know, one of the one of the segments of the energy sector that hasn't surged is midstream. You know, there's a lot of value in midstream. Midstream doesn't tend to be as volatile. Um, I think I definitely wouldn't be investing in a small oil or gas producer right now because those could be right for a serious haircut. Um, but, you know, if you see an Exxon Mobil sell off, if you see, uh, you know, a reasonable price there, they have lagged. Exxon Mobil, for instance, has lagged Chevron. They've lagged some of their competitors. And so there's maybe some value there, but I'd be very careful about the pure oil producers. I tend to lean toward uh, midstream companies there. OK, fair enough. Uh, you know, you're also an expert in the utility sector. You're chief investment strategist of our premium trading publication, Utility Forecaster. How are these energy trends that we've been discussing affecting utility stocks? Well, the biggest issue there is any electric utilities that are heavily dependent on natural gas. So uh, natural gas prices spiking can hurt their margins. Now, you've also got natural gas utilities that themselves sell natural gas. and Sometimes they have a hard time maintaining margins when natural gas prices are spiking. It's hard to completely pass on those, uh, those price increases. Now, if you've got a natural gas utility that has some exposure to natural gas production, then, then uh, that's, a, that's a bonus right there. Any utilities like that should, be, should do very well. The Federal Reserve has started its tightening cycle. What are the ramifications for utilities stocks? Well, that's potentially a problem for utilities. There's going to be some competition there now between utilities and interest-bearing uh, investment vehicles. So uh, you might see some outflow of money from the utility sector. And the other way it hurts utilities is utilities are very capital intensive. And so they have to borrow money. And when interest rates go up, it costs them a little bit more money. So, you know, it's not ideal. We've had a low interest rate environment for a long time. And, and you know, we're not going to go to really high interest rates soon, but, you know, I think utilities are going to face some headwinds as, as interest rates start to rise. Inflation, obviously, is running pretty hot. What are some of your favorite inflation hedges? Well, I've always liked the energy stocks. I mean, they have been one of the most reliable energy hedges, I mean, inflation hedges forever. Uh, again, some of them are, are pretty overpriced right now, and you have to be aware if there is a pullback on oil prices. But, you know, if there's a pullback on oil prices, inflation is going gonna, is gonna to diminish. That has been the major driver of inflation over the last year. So that's why energy stocks are such a good inflation hedge. Robert, that was very insightful, very useful for average investors. I appreciate your time. Take care. Thanks, John. You just received some invaluable investing insights from my colleague, Robert Rapier. For additional information on effective inflation hedges now, consult the article that accompanies this video on the Investing Daily website. Well, that's it for today. I'm John Persinos, Editorial Director of Investing Daily. Thanks for watching.